Good morning, everyone. It's Robert from On My Turntable. Hope you're having a great morning this morning. It is Thursday morning, as always, a coffee kind of morning. Uh, I want to continue uh, my look at some great albums uh, from the year 1971 this time. And uh, as I said earlier, I don't have everything from uh, uh, any particular year, but I've got some, some good ones to show you. And uh, what a great uh, year in music for sure. The 70s to me and the 60s uh, were some of the best music ever, but that's just my opinion. Uh, there's some great music in the 80s as well, and the 90s and the 2000s, but uh, that prime year of, of mid uh, to late 60s and, and uh, 70s uh, are, are fantastic. So um, we'll get into 1971 in just a moment. Before I do, though, please hit the like and subscribe button below. Thank you to all that have liked and subscribed so far. I greatly appreciate it. I want to continue to put great content out there to be informative and to show you guys some great bands and artists that I have in my collection. It's because of you guys, your likes, your subscriptions, your wonderful, wonderful comments that keep me going, keep me motivated to do this kind of thing, and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, these kind of ended up in uh, alphabetical order <laughs> for some reason, but um, we'll go through and uh, start out with one of the best live albums ever and unfortunately um these are or fortunately i don't know a uh, combination of cd and, and and vinyl but uh one of the greatest live albums ever uh almond brothers band at fillmore east um fantastic fantastic concert july 6 1971 Love the extended jams on this one. Um, you got the awesome whipping post, You Don't Love Me, in the memory of um, Elizabeth Reed. Um, it's one of their most commercially successful albums, their first live album as well. Uh, it's also listed in the Library of Congress um, to uh, for uh, culturally, historically, and aesthetically important pretty awesome for a, a rock band to have a live album that is uh, culturally, historically, and, and uh, critically important, but it definitely is an important album. Um, yeah, this is, this is remarkable stuff. Um, did I say Mark, did I say uh, July, oh, it was released July 6th. It was recorded March uh, 12th and 13th. Uh, 1971 but uh, what a classic classic performance this one is awesome awesome stuff and I apologize the first few albums are going to be uh, the first few albums are going to be CDs uh, for all those vinyl uh, enthusiasts uh, but I'll get to the vinyl in just a second don't worry um, Black Sabbath Master of Reality Oof. Uh, <laughs> third studio album. Um, again, it uh, uh, rock, doom metal, um, just amazing stuff. At number five on the UK charts, number six on the US charts. Double platinum status album. You got Children of the Grave, uh, Lord of This World, um, Into the Void. Um, Tony Iommi uh, actually down-tuned uh, the guitar to make it easier for him to play as a, as a result of his accents on his, uh, on his fingers. Uh, Geezer lowered his uh, bass strings as well, uh, but that gave him a harder, uh, edgier, darker sound. Um, I love the intro to Sweet Leaf on this one. Um, as they as they down tune their guitar, Ozzy actually sang higher, <laughs> but uh, it made it a, a fantastic, fantastic album. You got Sweet Leaf, uh, After uh, Forever, Embryo, Children of the Grave, Orchid, uh, Lord of This World, Solitude, and Into the Void. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Master of Reality. One of my favorites. Black Sabbath. One of my favorite bands for sure. Um, then you have uh, Alice Cooper, K 
killer. Um, in 1971, this would be his uh, uh, the fourth album by the Alice Cooper Band. Uh, Under My Wheels, the big hit off of that one. And Be My Lover as well. Uh, both made the Billboard charts. Um, Desperado is actually a tribute to uh, uh, Jim Morrison. Um, but uh, You Don't Make Me Nervous and Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. Great garage band uh, tunes. You got Dead Babies on here. Um, Be My Lover. Really, really good stuff. Awesome. I love that cover as well. There's the band there. Great, great cover. But uh, yeah, fantastic album. Alice Cooper, Killer. As this one is as well, L.A. Woman, The Doors. Uh, sixth album by them, and unfortunately the last to feature Jim Morrison. Um, but another blues-based uh, album. Um, Stripped-down version as well. Um, no orchestrated uh, songs on here. You got The Changeling, Lover Madly. Big, big hit. Been Down So Long, that heavy groove on Been Down So Long. Car Sist By My Window, L.A. Woman, classic tune. Uh, La America, uh, High Anthony's His House, Crawl and Cake Steak, the big uh, blues uh, track on that one. The Wasp, Texas Radio and the Big Beat, love that track as well. And of course, Riders in the Storm. Fantastic, fantastic album. The Doors, L.A. Woman. Okay, we get into some vinyl now. We got uh, Tarkus, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Uh, second release by these guys. I love their first album. Tarkus, uh, um, you got the first side is the seven part uh, self titled Tarkus. Uh, side two, perhaps a little weaker side, uh, more song based on that one. Uh, but they all went number one in the UK, uh, number nine in the US, number 12 in Canada. Um, but uh, I just absolutely love this one. Uh, it's it's so good. Again, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer is definitely a listen. Um, you've got uh, uh, Bidas Crystal, uh, Time and a Place, uh, Jeremy Bender. <laughs> I love that track as well. Uh, and then closing with Are You Ready, Eddie? Uh, there's no acoustic ballads on this one, which is cool, and the, there's no jazz uh, jazz interludes on this one. But overall, a great, great album by three amazing artists. And, uh, yeah, Tarkas, uh, really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, from this great box set, The Faces featuring... Uh, five of their albums um you've got where is it here here it is a not as good as a wink to a blind horse it's pretty long album title but uh it's their third album and one of the most successful albums as well got the big hit on there stay with me with that gritty ronnie wood um guitar riffs. I love Ron Woods playing. He's such a multi-instrumentalist and, and um, such a great, great player. Every song's great. The band is tight. Uh, Miss Judy's Farm. Um, that's all you need. Uh, you're so rude. Then they do a great um, uh, version of Chuck Berry's Memphis on this one. Rod Stewart's voice is gritty, that gritty, gritty voice uh, that he has. Um, and uh, Stay With Me is a great Great track. Um, yeah, The Faces. Good band. Short-lived, unfortunately. But um, they all went on to do great things. But, yeah, great little box set as well. So not as, a good, not as, a, is as good as a wink uh, to a blind horse. Fantastic stuff. Um, one of my all-time favorites doesn't matter what decade it is or what year it is. This is the Stephen Wilson stereo remix of Aqualung by Jethro Tull. I mean, what can you say about this one? 
<laughs> the classic Aqualon Cross-Eyed Mary Cheap Day Return. Now, I've got all these beautiful little dillies in there. Uh, Mother Goose. Um, my God. I mean, uh, you've got Martin Barr's amazing guitars. You've got Ian Anderson's amazing uh, vocals, his writing, uh, his flute. The flute solos in this are just outstanding. And Stephen Wilson did an amazing job in remixing this one. This is a, a classic, as a classic goes, for sure. Um, just remarkable, remarkable stuff. And Aqualung, I love it. As, a, as well as this one, Zeppelin IV. One of my all-time favorites um, by Zeppelin. Of course, Stairway to Heaven on this one. Um, Black Dog, the Ballad of Evermore. I mean, it's a mixture of acoustic, a mixture of rock. Stairway to Heaven is an opus that all the other bands that put out big hits are compared to. Um, they call it their Stairway to Heaven. I think of Child in Time um, by, uh, and, and maybe even War Pigs from Black Sabbath, Child in Time from Deep Purple, uh, Hotel California from the Eagles. It's all their Stairway to Heaven type of songs where it's a slow build and then it just goes into a huge crescendo of, of tunes. This is a, a definitely a remarkable album. Zep 4. So, so good. Um, I also have a CD version of it as well. I just had to pick that up as I was going through my stuff. Uh, and then you have Metal. Um, Pink Floyd. Uh bit of a darker album obviously darker than dark side uh, no pun there um, and more of a looser album as well uh, really underrated I think but uh, um, it's uh, cool melodic runs on this one um, the atmosphere is, is, is so good um, <laughs> It's, I, ha, I was reading one critic version of it. It's kind of uh, as you're running through the woods and something's grabbing at the, at the, at the, uh, um, the cuffs of your pants as you're running through. It's, it's just got, it just grabs you. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful, underrated album in metal, 1971. Uh, I don't have this on vinyl. I've got to get more stones on vinyl. All my, all my stones are on CD, most of them anyway. But uh, you got Sticky Fingers. Um, Brown Sugar, what a classic, classic song is that. I'm not sure whether that would be um, allowed to be released in these days, but uh, it's definitely a cool, cool track. Sway, Wild Horses, the beautiful, beautiful Wild Horses. Um, you Can't Hear Me Knocking, You Gotta Move, the classic bitch. I Got the Blues, Sister Morphine, Dead Flowers, and Mood Like uh, Mile just from start to finish. Fantastic album. Uh, speaking of The Faces and Rod Stewart, this is uh, my favorite Rod Stewart album. Every picture tells a story. Uh, Rod even plays some mandolin on this one, on Mandolin Wind. It's pretty much a Faces album as well um, because uh, you've got Ian McLaughlin um, and uh, also uh, Ronnie Woods on this one as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's a continuation of a Faces album. But you got Every Picture Tells a Story. Classic, classic stuff. Seems like a long time. That's all right. Tomorrow's such a long time. Maggie May, of course. Mandolin Win, written by Rod Stewart. Played uh, Mandolin by Rod Stewart. Um I know I'm losing you and reason to believe. Um, yeah. Awesome stuff. Again, one of my favorite Rod Stewart albums. Sorry for the glare. Electric Warrior. T-Rex. Um, Bang a Gong. Planet Queen. Uh, the Motivator. Life's a Gas, um, just 
um, Mambo Sun, Cosmic Dancer, Lean Woman Blues, T-Rex, it's a great, great album, Electric Warrior, fantastic stuff, really, really good, really, really good. And then you have this classic from 1971, who's next? Uh, some think it's a great album, some think it's not so bad. Um, but uh, the first the first side, you got Bob O'Reilly, Bargain, Loving for Keeping My Wife and Song is Over. And then side two is Getting Into Tune, Going Mobile, Behind Blue Eyes and Won't Get Fooled Again. I mean, this is, this is a fantastic album. Fantastic album. It's one of my favorites by The Who, for sure. But, uh, yeah. Happy to have this one. And finally, the Yes album. What's not to like about this one? <laughs> What's not to like? Uh, sorry, plastic's a little heavy on this one. Uh... Yours is no disgrace. Star Trooper. What a what a. The live version of that is just amazing. I've seen all good people. Your move, adventure, perpetual change. The amazing John Anderson on this one. Chris Squire, Steve Howe, fantastic, fantastic guitarist. Tony Kay and Bill Bruford. Fantastic lineup on that one. So there you have it, guys. There's some great albums uh, from 1971. All great, all classic. Uh, stand the test of time. Uh, most of them do, for sure. And um, let me know what uh, your favorites from 71 are, for sure. Uh, I'll be back in a uh, couple of days, perhaps, with uh, 72. I'll just keep on going through to 79. I may do the 80s too. It all depends on how much I have, but um, all the best. And uh, again, thank you for all the uh, contest entries so far. I've seen some amazing drummers in my uh, Keep the Beat contest. It's showing three to five drummers, chance of one a $40 Amazon gift card, going through it October 1st. So keep it going, guys. I love you all, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye now.